If you're creating an app, likely you're going to be using images, text, and other things that the user can see on the screen. We'll get started with Corona by learning how to create images. First, we're going to create some variables that will be very useful to us throughout this entire course. These variables will store the width and height of the screen, and as well the center point of the screen. They'll allow us a way to conveniently access these properties so that we can position all of our visual assets easier. Within the main.lua file of our project, we'll start by typing underscore screen in all caps, equals, and then we'll open and close some curly braces. Now what we've done here is we've created a table. Tables are a lot like arrays and objects in JavaScript, in case you have any experience with that language, or just general kinds of arrays in other C-based languages. Within the curly braces, we'll type height in all caps equals display.contentHeight with a capital H, comma, width equals display.contentWidth. This height and width property is storing the height of the available screen and the width of the available screen as defined in the config.lua file. Let's take a look at that file right now. So I'll head to the finder and I've got my project folder open. And within the config.lua, I'll double click and we see here content equals and then a curly brace. The width and height here are the values that we have set for the width and height of our application. So it doesn't matter what device this is running on, Regardless, it will have a width of 320 pixels or units, really, and a height of 568 pixels or units or points. The reason that we're hedging with these values is because now there are devices that have multiple pixels per point, such as those iOS devices that have retina displays. And so we're really just defining the points, not the actual pixels, because if we take iPhone 5, for example, its actual pixel width of the screen is 640 pixels, not 320. Here, Corona is letting us define points because it more flexibly allows us to scale our application according to screen size. So I'll just switch back to main.lua, which is the tab here at the left, and we'll continue. Okay, underneath this declaration, I'll type underscore screen dot center equals, and then I'll open and close some curly braces. And here within the curly braces, x equals display dot content center x, and then a comma, y equals display dot content center y. And what we've done here is we've added a property called center to the screen table. Within that, there's an x and y property that stores the midpoint x and midpoint y of the display as we have defined it within config.lua. There's one more thing that we'll do before we create an image, and that is we will set the status bar to be hidden. Now the status bar on a mobile device is that thin strip at the top of the device that denotes the time, it denotes the reception if you're dealing with cellular, and as well it might denote the battery charge. We're not going to display that in our app, instead we're going to hide it, and we'll do it via software. There is another way to do this via the build.settings file, but we won't go into that. What I'll do is underneath the screen.center declaration, I'll type display.setStatusBar, and I'll open some parentheses. Now within the parentheses, I'll type display.hiddenStatusBar, and notice that the H in hidden is capitalized. Okay, so I'll save this, and I already have the simulator open. I'll load this particular project by going to File, Open. It's already pointing to my directory, creating images here. I don't need to select the file, I'll just choose Open again. And now the project is open. We have a completely blank black screen. Okay, well, let's head back to the main.lua file and we'll now create an image. So to create an image in Corona, we're just gonna call one function and that function will look for the image within our project folder and we'll load it. We're going to use a function that actually will take advantage of the sensing of retina displays or high density displays. And these are displays that have multiple pixels per point. So let's take a look at the image that we'll load. I'll head to my project folder, and I've created a folder in advance called images, and within that there are two images, one called donut.png and the other called donut at 2x. If I take a look at donut.png, it's an image of a pink donut with a bite taken out of it. If I take a look at the next image, it's twice as large. The at 2x suffix on the file 
denotes that the image is to be used for high density displays on iOS or Retina displays. For Android, this image will not be used. What's important here is that we're not actually going to call donut at 2x. Instead, we'll call donut.png, and the function that we're going to use will automatically swap in or out the regular sized image or the double sized image according to the platform that it's running on. We'll head back to main.lua. And now we'll type local donut equals display dot new image rect. And we'll open and close some parentheses. The first argument within this function takes a string, and that string is a path to the image that we want to load. So we'll type images slash, and that denotes the image folder, donut dot png. The second argument is the width of the image. That is 220 pixels, and this is the width of the regular sized image, the donut.png image. And the third argument is the height of the image, which is 170 pixels. I'll save it, head to the simulator, and hit Command R or Control R to refresh if you're on Windows. We can really only see a quarter of the donut. Now we need to position it to the center of the screen. And one thing you might be able to sense here is that the anchor point for this particular image is at its center. And it's the anchor point that serves as the point of reference when we are positioning the image across the screen. Let's take a look at how to do that. Within main.lua, I'll now type donut.x equals screen.center.x. And I'll do the same for y. Donut.y equals screen.center.y. Save it, head back to the simulator and refresh. And now we see that the donut is at the center of the screen. Now I mentioned anchor point earlier. Let me show you how to set the anchor point within Corona. So at line 14, just before we position the donut, I'll create a new line. I'll type donut.anchorx with a capital X equals zero. And what this will do is it will move the X axis anchor to the left of the image. Then I'll type donut.anchor y equals zero. And that'll move the y axis anchor to the top of the image. So the anchor is a value from 0 to 1, where 0 is the left on the x and the top on the y, and 1 is the right on the x and the bottom of the y. So here I've moved the anchor point to the top left corner of the image. Heading back to the simulator, I'll refresh, and now we see that the image is still at the center of the screen, but the anchor point has changed. So it looks like the donut is to the bottom right of that point. Go back to the main.lua file, delete what we just put in, and there we see the donut is at the center of the screen again. So already we can see that Corona affords us a really easy method to create images, and as we'll find with most of our display objects, creating any visual assets is a breeze with Corona.